all right what is going on today youtube for those of you guys who are new to this channel make sure you guys hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button to always get notified when i post bmw e30 content or just any content in general but today we're gonna be switching out the starter i'm having a issue i'm starting the car so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what that looks like right now Jeez. pretty nice all right, so I did a couple of mod, well, just like one mod that I did to the car that I didn't record and I probably should have done it. But if you guys see my recent videos, you guys seen how far this was sticking out. So what I did, I took off the bumper or the, I forget, they call it a diving board. Um, I guess that's like the BMW street term, I guess, but they call it a diving board. So I took it off, there's hydraulics that are pushing the um, bumper out so that way if you get into a car accident and uh, that way if you get into a car accident the bumper will it will reduce a lot of uh, impact so it's not really a safety thing but it makes the car look a lot better my personal opinion so I went ahead and pushed that in and uh, I'll probably throw a before and after picture right now so that way you guys can see the difference so that's how it looks with the bumper pushed in and everything all right, so I'm in my E30 right now. So this is the issue that I am having on starting my car. Okay, well it started, which is really weird, but it's having trouble starting. So, you see how it kind of um, had trouble in the beginning? So that's because the starter is bad. And if you want to know if your starter is going bad, uh, you can leave your car running. And I'll show you guys right now. All right, so if you leave your car running, what you can do to see if your starter or alternator is bad, you can take off the, neg you can take off the, the negative cable all right, so the car's still running. So that means it's not your alternator. So that is a higher chance it is your starter. Okay, so your starter is gonna be located under your intake manifold on the E30. So in order to get easier access to the starter, which the bolts are right there. I don't know if you guys can see, it's pretty dark in there, but there's two bolts that are connecting the starter from it not coming out, but Anyways, so in order to get easier access, uh, you probably might want to take off your intake and then you want to take off your intake manifold. Now I know that seems like a headache, but if you want to make your job a little easier, more time consuming, that is the easier way. Or you could take off your intake and then just try to fit your hands in there and then try to deal with all that stuff. But yeah, so first things first we are going to be disconnecting the battery because you don't want to shock yourself or blow a fuse so disconnect your battery you do want to make sure that that is not going to be touching anything to ground so i just put a little rag right here just for safety precautions but yeah so we're going to go ahead and take off the intake first which is really easy just pop those open just like that and then these are ten so you could disconnect these but I didn't really tighten them down I didn't lift this and then obviously pin. so that should come off pretty easy just like that okay so what you're gonna need is a 12 or a 13 to take off the intake manifold bolts that are holding it together and then you're gonna want to take out this vacuum hose that's connected to the valve cover and then you also want to disconnect this assembly right here it's only three uh, three bolts it's a two tens right here and then a 13 right there and then just un unplug all these sensors right here and then after when you're done doing those sensors you want to go ahead and come over here and you want to take out the the fuel line so the fuel connects to a hose right here 
Oh wow. So that hose connects to this end of the fuel right there. And be aware there might be a little fuel leaking, so make sure you have a rag with you. So um, after you take off those bolts, you do want to get an extender and a swivel, so that way it's a lot easier to get the bolts underneath the intake manifold. Wow, it's really not that dirty in there, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, so as soon as you get all those things unloosed, unloosened, you could just easily lift up the intake manifold so that way you have enough room and play to take out that starter. And I also took out my alternator so that way it's a lot easier to work in there. Very easy to do. Um, like I said, it's very time consuming if you want to go this route. But I promise you, it will be a lot less stressful once you take off or move the intake manifold up a little bit so that way you could take out the starter so now I'm gonna go ahead and try to see if I'm able to work on the starter now so let's get to it all right so I took off the first bolt that is connected to the alternator which is there's a bolt right here and there's a bolt on that side you're gonna need 14s so that way um, you could loosen them up and then take them off so as soon as you take that one off you move to the next one which is the more difficult one so that one is going to be right there I don't know if you guys can see because it's dark and then somehow find a way to get under there so yeah this is gonna be pretty interesting alright so I completely took out the starter I don't know if you guys can see it it was placed in there um, yeah let me go ahead and show you guys the old starter and the new starter so this is the old starter this wasn't really allowing me to start sometimes I would put the key and the ignition and all you would just hear is it just um, it just it just wasn't turning on but now I'm gonna go ahead and swap this into the E30 now that way I could be starting up a lot cleaner so let's get straight into it and also um, you're probably gonna need a eight um, you're gonna need one of these the hex bits you're gonna need a size 8 so that way you can take off the bracket that is holding the starter you will see you'll you'll see everything once you start working on it like what you need to take off but yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and put the starter back in okay so now that I got the all the starter back in into its place I already tightened up the top part now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up that bolt that you see right there so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I got my girly mm -hmm. he's helping me on the 30 right now so yeah all right so now that I got the starter in I connected those right there so I just connected those and then I'm gonna go ahead and put oh well this bracket into its place just like so so that bracket goes right there like that and then you want to get this that you took out oh well and then you're gonna want to go ahead and screw oh it's a little difficult just drop that now that the starter is back in I'm gonna go ahead and put these bolts into or connect them back to the just put them back on the intake manifold so as you can see I had to unbolt whatever was right here This one and it gets a little trickier. Oh, look. So that way you guys can see what I had to do to get that started in there. Because there is no videos whatsoever on how to switch the goddamn starter on um, the E30 on the M10s. So I am happy to be the first person on YouTube to show you guys and tell you guys how to do it to make your job a lot easier. 
All right, so now the bolts underneath that you're gonna need to get to, which I took off the alternator to get to those a lot easier. So you just screw those daddies in there. Make sure you have washers because So now we are going to move to this part right here that I had took off. So we are going to have to um, be careful when you unscrew this bolt because it does loosen this housing right here and coolant does leak from underneath it. So when you are unscrewing this, just be mindful that coolant might leak so don't get scared if you see something leaking you don't know where it's coming from so we're gonna go ahead and loosen this really quick okay so I just took it out and now we're gonna go ahead and place that in there and then you're gonna want to get uh, the long bolts that you took out and you're going to want to switch it on this side it's coming on this side right so as you guys can see I'm going to go ahead and slip those in really quick screw those in just halfway for right now so that way you hold just like that the other bracket or your other bolt Repeat the same process. Now that size is a 10. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this. over to your 13 and you are going to tighten this baddie right here get it nice and hand tight oh whoa. don't want to strip that <laughs> okay you're good oh wait no so now we are going to connect the sensors so pay attention to where I connect these sensors. So this sensor, the darker red, goes with the darker red. So that just clips in like so. Um, yeah. And then this one clips into the yellow one like so. Okay. And then these wires right here connect to. Um, where did they connect? Oh, these right here. So this yellow one, the skinny yellow one, goes in the far left, or your far right from your point of view, and that one goes in on that side. So now that's connected, okay? So now that you have everything connected on that part, now you can go ahead and connect the hose I had told you to connect earlier. The Let me get this gas hose out the way. That is the fuel. So let's push those aside. Let's get this in here. Just like that. Okay. And then this is a 10 too. Um, you don't have to completely take it out. You, you could just loosen it to move it to the side. Uh, just to make your life a little easier. So they just hand tighten those. They don't have to be super tight. So as long as they're not loose. Okay, so that's tight. Go ahead and grab your flathead and tighten up this clamp right here. Just like so. Things back connected. Go ahead and tighten up this clamp right here. Just like so. That it's all the way in there. 
just tighten this up. And I hope this helps you guys a lot because I know it's stressful when you don't find any videos on the car. Because trust me, it was stressing me out trying to figure out how to remove the intake manifold, how to remove the starter, what I need to do. So it was, it was just very stressful. But I hope this video helps you guys and gives you guys uh, gives you guys a look on how to take stuff off. Okay, so that's all disconnect or that's all connected back. Nothing is loose. All right, so I put everything back in. So I already told you guys how to take it off. What you guys need to do to put everything back in. So you can see the starters in there. Um, alternator is back on, intake is back on, all the hoses are connected. I was going to switch out the the fuel filter, but um, I don't have a jack to go underneath the car to loosen the clamp to take out the hose. So I'm going to do that in another video. But I think it's time to start her up to see how much better she starts. So let's go ahead in here. Keep the ignition, close the door because my car screams. starts up way better look how fast that started up compared to how it started before I know the squeaking in the car it, it annoys the hell out of me well it's the damn alternator it's looking pretty good it's so funny how this car burbles it has like it's pops and stuff it's so funny what yeah that's gonna be it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed me working on this beautiful car um i the next video i will be posting up will be a lot more interesting um probably take it out to a car meet um my buddy said he'll let me race his m6 so we'll do a video on that I was just looking for people to race but yeah i mean the car is looking mint like the inside of the car is looking a lot more newer than when what I than when I first got it. So yeah, just stay tuned for that, everyone. Make sure you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. It means a lot to me. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.